Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on Supergirl Season 6. Today we're going to be doing my review slash breakdown for Episode 3. So if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new, so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. Okay, so sorry for this video coming out a few days late. I've been extremely busy, I haven't been able to make any videos. I've done a few posts updating you guys on the community tab, where I've explained why I haven't been able to upload. But we are back, we are going to be making videos daily, so please be sure to stick around and check the channel out every day. Also later this evening we're going to be doing my live stream, which normally is every Thursday. However, again, I wasn't able to make any videos or my stream yesterday, so we're going to be doing it later tonight at 9pm GMT. So translate that to wherever you guys are, but for now, let's go ahead and get into the review. So. This episode was pretty good, I really enjoyed the stuff in the Phantom Zone once again, and I thought the Team Supergirl scenes were better than last episode for sure. The Brainy and Lena scenes were probably my favourites, also the Lex scenes were very good for the short amount of time he was in this episode. Obviously he's going to be sticking around for a while, so that's pretty much confirmed by now. But definitely, once again, the Kara, Zorel. Well, Zorel's not in that much of this episode, but the Kara and Nixley scenes were easily the best thing and the most grabbing thing about this episode, and I loved it. Anyway, so that's my brief thoughts. Now, let's go ahead and break down everything that went on. So, at the start of the episode, we begin where we left off with Kara and Zorel grabbing onto a phantom who is going through a portal because we found out last episode that they travel through portals to get to different places within the Phantom Zone and so that's their plan to try and escape. They think if they can grab onto a Phantom, maybe it'll lead them out of the Phantom Zone or into a different place and so they literally surf on a Phantom and I thought that was really great and I kind of laughed. I was like, okay, so they literally just grabbed onto this dude and just went through this portal. Sure. Anyway, so then we go on and we see Zorel. He gets captured by some criminals who are stuck in the Phantom Zone. However, he is saved later. And like I said, Zorel wasn't a huge part of this episode. It was more about Kara and the new character who was just introduced to the show, named Nixley. Okay, so Nixley is played by Peter Sargent. She, in the comics, is the wife of Mixie, aka Mixie's Pidlick, who we've seen in the show multiple times and he's always a great part of the show. The last time he came was in the 100th episode, he played a major part and it, that was one of the best episodes of last season. So a couple of days ago they announced this, that she would be a series regular on the show, that being Nixley, played by Peter Sargent. We made a video on that, so you can go check that out, that was a couple of days ago. We go into Nixley's backstory in the comics, so maybe you guys would be interested. But anyway, in this episode, she was really good. I love her attitude, she is quite quirky, and she's a lot of fun. Also, I just have to say, I love that they just went for Peter's normal accent and that they didn't make her American or something. I just thought, you know, not everyone's American, so just let them be something else, be something different. So I really appreciated that, and she just had so many great scenes every time it went back to the phantom zone you had kara and nixley i was totally invested and so she is the literal flip of mixie i mean they're very similar what i'm getting at is she's basically the female version of mixie which is pretty much spot on because in the comics they're actually married and so they're both from the same dimension they know each other which was confirmed in this episode and we know later in the season they are going to be coming face to face on Earth and so Kara is going to be returning with Nixley to Earth and Mixie is going to show up at some point and they're going to properly interact so I can't wait for that episode. We did actually break down the leaked set photos from Canada Graphs. That was in a video a couple of days ago. I'll link it on the screen right here. You can go check out that video because we broke down the set photos with Nixley and Mixie in the same scene with Kara and the rest of Team Supergirl. Okay, so let's continue with the Phantom Zone scenes. After going through that portal with Zorel, Kara lands, she breaks her leg because obviously she doesn't have healing inside the Phantom Zone, she doesn't have any of her powers. And so her leg is really injured and she isn't able to walk, so they make a splint for her. That's how she's able to just like barely keep the pain in. And Nixley all this time is helping Kara. And at first you're like, is she going to be a villain? But it seems like she is good for now. There is a possibility that with what's happening with Mixie, 
she could turn out to be at least a bit villainous towards the next half of the season. But for now, she's going to be Kara's helper, they're going to be friends, but there is a possibility that she may turn bad. And so she has this magic orb, which still has a few sparks of magic left. And with that, and also Kara's help with Kara doing a little speech to Nixley, she is able to regain her power, she's able to literally and metaphorically break out of her father's shackles, which obviously is very clear and, I mean, it's pretty obvious. However, it is a nice way for her to get her powers back because she is overcoming something that has haunted her since she was banished into the Phantom Zone. And so they explain her backstory, so she was a princess from her fifth dimension, she obviously knows Mixie as well, that was confirmed. She was banished by her father to the Phantom Zone, I believe her father actually killed his son and didn't think Nixley was worth even killing, so he just banished her. Also, what she says is very interesting because she confirms that she has memories from another time slash another reality. And obviously we know Crisis has affected the Phantom Zone and from this, it's definitely affected everyone in it and people are getting sort of ideas or visions in their mind where they know it's not true but they feel like this is something that they lived. So I'm wondering, is Crisis going to play a bigger role into this season than maybe I even thought? Like, I thought, you know, they've moved on from Crisis, it's the next season. But with the shows continually bringing it up, it seems like it's just such a big event that they can't ignore it. And so it's interesting that Nixie talks about that in this episode. Anyway, let's continue. So Kara believes that there is a way out of the Phantom Zone. This is how the episode ends. And Kara's idea is that they need to travel by using Nixley's magic to this anchor in the Phantom Zone. And this is because her mother created the Phantom Zone and she had previously talked about it. And so Kara is determined to get Zorel and Nixley and herself out of the Phantom Zone and find this anchor point. I don't know where exactly it is, but instead of going through those portals that you saw at the start of this episode, they're going to be using Nixley's magic in order to hop around and try and find a way out. And so I think this is what the synopsis from the next episode talked about. So I believe that they're going to be fully going into that and them trying to break out. Okay, so back on Earth. Team Supergirl continue to search for Kara. They try and find a way. Once again, nothing is working. Everyone is really worried especially Alex, but also Brainy at the start of the episode talks about it, and John briefly mentions it a couple of times, but Alex specifically watches Supergirl's memoir. That was the thing that we saw in episode one. She recorded this little video just in case she didn't make it back, and so it's obviously very fitting that she did it just before she was sent away into another dimension, and so this is our only interactions between the main cast and Melissa in these first like six or seven episodes with new footage of Melissa. She's in a wig. You can pretty much tell obviously her hairstyle has changed this season. She's back to the classic Supergirl hairstyle. She doesn't have the bangs anymore like she had for the last couple of seasons. And so obviously the wig is there and you know that there is new footage since Melissa came back and I think it's an interesting way to have them interact on the screen. And also I like how the stories are playing out, like with the Phantom Zone scenes, then the Earth scenes, they are cutting between both of them. And although I think the Phantom Zone scenes are actually better and more interesting, because, you know, Team Supergirl is literally just trying to get into the Phantom Zone, which is kind of interesting, but the characters are kind of lamenting and breaking down over Kara. And I feel like they're not all being handled in the best way. However, I think Alex is very, very much on the nose, on the point. They've hit it right. And so Alex is being comforted again in this episode by Kelly as she loses hope and she talks about how bad she misses Kara. And so she's pretty much lost hope, unlike last episode, where she was absolutely determined to get her out. Anyway, let's continue from here. So we have Lex scenes in this episode. Lex is once again up to no good. He burns down a children's hospital just to get back at Lena. So he sends off one of his minions to do that. Also, it's interesting that Lex has his own version of Alfred Pennyworth. I'm not sure if they mentioned the butler or like his assistant's name, but very much so evoking that. 
And so Lena actually has a few really, really good scenes with Brainy in this episode. Like I said, this was my favorite Earth scene in this episode where you have Brainy who really badly wants to kill Lex. He has two moments that he absolutely roasts Lex. The first one, he goes up to the screen and starts shouting at the screen, but it's interrupted by Jean coming in, dragging in Silas, who's been possessed by a phantom. But the second one, you have Lena trying to calm him down as he is determined to kill Lex. He thinks that is the best way to get back at him for all the terrible things that he's done. And so I think Jesse did a really good job. Also, I think Katie did a really good job bouncing off of him. And so, as I just mentioned, Silas is briefly in this episode. I think the best thing that has happened to him is that he was possessed by a phantom. Like I said, last week, one of my biggest complaints was his character. I don't think he's very well written. Felt very rushed, his introduction, and I mean, come on, look back at that scene from that episode with him showing up for the first time. But anyway, I'm presuming we're gonna see more of him, but they're able to stop the phantoms, and he has three roommates who are turned into phantoms as well. And this leads to the phantoms, there's like four or five of them attacking the tower, and so there's an all-out battle between them and Team Supergirl. I think this fight was better than last episode's phantom fight. I thought it was a bit weirdly choreographed last episode. So this was an upgrade, so that's always a good thing. Also, you have Kelly in action. This is kind of our first glimpse at Kelly as Guardian. Also, in the next couple of days, we're going to have a breakdown of the new photos, which reveals Kelly's new suit, which I'm really, really excited to break down and talk to you about. And so I feel like this moment was definitely a tease for her becoming a hero because she wasn't able to do that much and she felt bad about it this episode. And I think she's definitely going to be training and she's eventually going to become a hero and actually suit up for the first time sometime very soon. And so the final thing in this episode we need to break down is that McGunn still feels a bit out of place this season. I don't understand why she's here. I mean, I'm a big fan of the character, but she just doesn't really blend well this season. It feels like she has just been plonked in the middle of Team Supergirl. And she's kind of just hopping off of like lines that maybe Jean would have said or someone else would have said and they've just put in another character. So again, not so hot McGann in this episode as well. She gets taken over by a Phantom 2. Jean is able to stop her from being turned. Seems like the Martians have a way to do anything and stop anything with their rituals. We've actually seen two of them use this season to stop attacks or different things that have been happening. It's quite convenient. But that's about it for the review. Let me know down in the comments below what did you guys think about this episode and are you excited for next week's episode? We're going to be doing some more Supergirl videos over the next few days. Like I said, I gotta go over the set photos with Kelly as Guardian. Also, David Ramsey is back. Obviously, Diggle and Arrow, he is directing Supergirl's episode. He's also going to be showing up in a Supergirl episode and in multiple episodes throughout the other shows. There's been some set photos on that. Also, we got to break down the new Supergirl trailer for next week's episode and the Flash trailer for next week's episode. So I'm going to break them down with these other videos. And so be on the lookout for those. But for now, please be sure to leave a like and a comment if you did enjoy the video. Subscribe and turn on notifications if you're new. And click right here for my latest video. But I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye.